Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're back in Essex. We're on the end of the Monk Jack coal season. Um, it's 31st of March today and the doe, row does and fallow does go out of season and I don't normally um, go after much deer after the 31st and that includes monk jack. Um, so here we are, we're sitting in a high seat, we're overlooking a nice grassy field. We've got uh, some wooded ground on our right hand side and to the left hand side of us we've got a nice thick belt and hopefully we're waiting for the monk jack to either come down the belt or across the field in front of us or out from the right hand side. Um, we're not here to shoot everything, it's just a case of a last little select cull um, just so we can keep the cull figures where we need to be. So it's a case of now of just sitting here and waiting. Because it's the 31st of March, I'm um, not saying the does are going out of season, that's normally my cut-off point for, for the fallow. We don't shoot a lot of row on here because we don't have many row. Um, and it's normally my cut-off point for the monk jack as well. Um, we have a, you know, a, a decent selection of monk jack on here uh, and they obviously have to be culled. And we just need to get one or two more down on the monk jack to get to the numbers where I need to be for the coal, for coal records. So normally after today, um, you know, it'll probably be the odd one, maybe through the year that I'll take out, um, but they, nothing more um, will be sort of taken until we start the season next year. Well, we're just sitting here, we've got, just had one monk jack come out, sort of like three quarters of the way up the bell, which is way too far to shoot. Um, but we've also we've got a pair of ravens that are nesting in one of the fir trees. Uh, it's the third year that um, they've been here, and you know it's it's quite I mean it's quite nice to actually see a pair. You know it's something that we don't have a lot of here. I mean you know but uh, so it's quite nice to have a pair of ravens, um, and you probably hear them in the background just charring away. It actually beginning to feel like springs on the way now. Um, temperatures have have gone up a bit, and you know I love this time of year um, because it's the beginning of a new year. Although we are in March, when I say the beginning, you can beginning to see life beginning to breathe again in the woods. The trees are coming out on buds. There's some green coming up in the undergrowth. It's just a new year of the wood is beginning um, and the, you know we've got fence out there, cock fence out there, we've got one just coming by here and there's a carrion crow which we're not too keen on but there we go we can't have it always but a day like today you know deer species are on the move it's just warm like I said there's a new sprinkling of growth in the under, undergrowth and it's just nice to be able to see, see things mooching about now you know spring is here um, we don't want to wipe the monk jack out, we don't want to wipe the fallow out, but we have to control them because too many deer, um, whichever species, is bad for the environment. You know, you have um, monk jack chomping away on all the undergrowth, all the flowers, all the flora, um, flora, um, and they won't let it grow. So. You know, that's one of the reasons why we have to control them. 
but left to their own devices they would just breed and breed and it's not good for the woods it's not good for the undergrowth it's not good for their own being as well you know the, the, the biggest part of controlling the deer population is that we take out we select cull so the deer that we actually leave are good specimens that will go on to keep the herd going so we'll always have deer about but we have to control them we have to keep the numbers down to a level that the ground will allow so that's one of the biggest reasons um, that we're out here now right so just if i can get a couple more tonight would be great uh, monk jack wise uh, and then like i say um, through the year just take the odd one out uh, I mean, Monk Jack, they're fantastic on the barbecue as well. You know they're not such a problem foxes are a problem all the time because anything that roosts on the ground they will get and it's you know pheasants and what well, partridges hares you know, peewit anything that roosts on the ground will always be troubled by foxes it just makes me wonder why we haven't seen the odd monk jack here normally you know there's monk jack around here so it just makes me wonder why um, Everything else is here, but just uh, we are seeing monk jack, but at the moment they're just like the other side of the field, which um, are just for me just too far away to shoot. Um, so I'm not even going to even attempt to anything that distance. Um, so we've still got you know a couple of hours to go yet before dark, so things could change quite rapidly. But at the moment, nothing's showing. the park. I don't know, me to me, maybe one, two years old though. Came into view down the belt, watching it, waiting for a clear shot, there's brambles and branches, waiting for a clear shot, literally just about to present itself, and it sort of like got alert, and the next thing we know, there's a young buck come through behind, which then obviously you know, started to sniff him, which, which spooked the doe off. Um, about two or three minutes after that, the doe came out onto the field, and I've got one branch in front of me, and it couldn't have walked down that branch any better. So waiting for it to clear the branch to have a shot, um, then the buck appeared again, spooked the doe, sniffed the doe, spooked the doe, and then couldn't get a clear shot or a standing shot uh, and just watched them go back into the belt. So we've still got a bit of time, so hopefully the doe might come out or even the buck. The buck was just a, a small sort of like medium buck like that, so it'd be a good one to take. Um, either one of those two would have been a good one to take, so we'll just wait now again. It's another waiting game and um, we'll see what the next sort of like few minutes bring.
the one thing about monk jack, you know, when you're sitting in a high seat, in my opinion, um, there's no need to rush the shot. You just wait for the shot to be presented to you, uh, and then you take it. I mean, if if you don't get a shot, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, well that's where the old uh, same sort of patience paid off there. Sort of hard to get a clear shot with the bramble, so we just had to, to wait until it presented itself clear, broadside, um, took a heart shot and dropped it on the spot. It's about probably 60, 70 yards sort of to the left. Um, we'll just give it another sort of 20 minutes, see if there's anything else come out. If not, we'll pick it up and uh, go and go look it. Yeah, just up there, look. I was aiming there, so it's just gone a little bit high, but um, the bottom line for me is that it's one shot, it's one kill, the beast is on the deck, dead. Um, you know, and it was killed outright. So, to me, job done. The fact is that it's a cull buck, um, you know, it's one shot, it's dead, it's on the ground. That one will probably end up in the freezer. Well, that's the end of an evening. We've got one monk jack cull buck down, and uh, so that'll probably be the end of my sort of monk jack culling. Now, I might take the odd one out uh, during the summer. So thanks very much for watching the shooting show. Look forward to seeing you next time.